Good morning. It's time for Daily Chapel at the LCMS International Center in St. Louis. The text is 1 John chapter 4, verses 16 through 21. The Reverend Robert Wurst is preaching. The broadcast of Chapel is underwritten by LCMS International Mission and Ministry to the Armed Forces. A reading from the first epistle of St. John chapter 4. The Holy Apostle writes, So we have come to know and to believe the love that God has for us. God is love. And whoever abides in love abides in God, and God abides in him. By this is love perfected with us, so that we may have confidence for the day of judgment, because as he is, so also are we in this world. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear. For fear has to do with punishment, and whoever fears has not been perfected in love. We love because he first loved us. If anyone says, I love God and hates his brother, he is a liar. For he who does not love his brother whom he has seen cannot love God whom he has not seen. And this commandment we have from him, whoever loves God must also love his brother. The word of the Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. (laughs) Love is love. It's the Anything Goes Wild West slogan of the times. It's the slogan for Pride Month, which we've forgotten is one of the seven mortal sins. It's a catchy sentence, though. Love is love. You can see it just about anywhere. Facebook, parade banners and floats, Coke bottles even. Love is love, and you know what it means. Whatever love you have for any other person is good, there should be no no limitations on your expressions of love. All love is good because love is love. Sounds good, doesn't it? It's inclusive, validates your desires, perhaps. It lets you be you. Scripture can be, and often is, cherry-picked for such sentiment, of course. Love one another is often called up. Another one used as part of today's reading, God is love. God is love. God loves everyone. Therefore, when we love others, we will be like God. You know, Satan's often described as a lion or a dragon or a wolf, big dangerous creatures. I think he has a bit of a mosquito-like quality to him. He deals death with his mouth. But mostly, in this case, he's annoying. You know how bothersome, penetrating, and annoying the mosquito's whine is in your ear? How you can't get him away from you? Well, Satan's temptations are often a bit like that whine. He is always about us, urging with his particular skills that the desire of your hearts is good, that you should do what makes you happy, that you should follow your heart. He isn't particularly creative, because there is nothing new under the sun. But he is incessant. He also has the trick of using God's own word to twist meanings and shift attitudes. He moves society and culture to embrace cliches such as love is love. And there's quite the irony there. Because if you don't go along with the crowd there, you will incite hatred against yourself. If you don't get in line, you will be accused of bigotry and, of course, a lack of the very thing, love. God is love. But there are parameters to it. God must be defined as he defines himself. He is not a cloud of motherly love who floats around raining down rainbows and unicorns upon mankind. He is not some Cupid who strikes fancy when and where he feels like it. His love, like him, is not vague in any way. It is not an undefined feeling that is sparked by whimsy in a brief glance. Love is how he defines it, not as how we might see fit. The ancient fathers sometimes talked of the Trinity as the Father as the, one, as the one who loves, and his Son as the Beloved One, 
and the Spirit as the love that proceeds from them both. Of course, you can never go too far with illustrations because we might confuse the persons or divide the substance, and we have a creed that deals with that. But their illustration does help us understand this little phrase, God is love. Because here we see love unlike any other. God so loved the world, and this is where it gets concrete, that he sent his only begotten Son. The Father loving the world and sending his beloved. It is his love in perpetual action. For God did not want his Son to be an only Son, if you will. But out of his great mercy, he adopted us as sons and bestowed this great love upon us in Christ. And the Spirit is sent by Jesus to preach this love in the world. So if you want to know God's love, you must look to the beloved Son, in whom the Father is well pleased, and look nowhere else. There you see the love of God for you. There he has taken on your flesh in the womb of the Blessed Virgin. He enters the waters of the Jordan to take on your sin. He suffers the scorn of men instead of receiving the worship that he is due. He takes the stripes of your own sins into his body. He is lifted up, put on display for the whole world to behold. And there he loves us to the end. We know his love because he has laid down his life for us. As Solomon, his father, sang, for love is as strong as death. There is your God, suffering and dying for you. It is a love like, unlike any other. On the third day, the Beloved One burst the belly of the tomb. He showed forth his hands, his feet, his side as evidence of his love for you, his concern for your salvation. He breathed out his spirit upon his apostles that they would go out into the world and preach this great love of God. And the world noticed. Much as they try not to notice, they notice. See how much they love one another. He ascended into heaven, leading, leading his enemies in his train. And there he stands at the Father's right hand, imploring him for you, because he loves you. The Spirit is the breath of the preached Word, and this love, this great divine love, is born to us in the Word and poured out upon us in the waters of the font. Here God abides in us and gives us His Spirit, who is always reminding of us of His great love for us in Christ, always pouring out the forgiveness of sins, saying week after week, day by day, take and eat my body, drink deeply of the chalice of my life-giving blood, O oh, my redeemed and dearly beloved ones, eat and drink my pledge of undying love for you. Hear this love spoken into your ear, into your mind, and your hearts by your pastors in the absolution, the preaching, and the prayers. Be at rest. Do not be afraid. Your sins are forgiven. Your death is but a pleasant rest for your body until I raise it from the grave. I am with you. God's love for us is always in action. By his grace, we love him as he first loved us. Believing in him, we love him in performing good works. We don't do the good works in order to prove our love. We do them because we are loved. We are sons of God. We have confidence because we have freely received his love. And whoever abides in God is a son of God. And thus being so deeply loved, we can look illness, enemy, death, and devil in the eye and not quail, not shrink back. We learn not to be afraid, but to look forward eagerly for the coming of the one who is the, de the desire of the nations. We look forward to the last day, suffering the threats of persecution, ostracization, and exile. We love the day of his coming, not because we've chosen to do so, because, but because he has chosen us. You did not choose me, but I chose you. Now it's very easy during these days full of pride to look down and despise those who 
espouse the phrases like love is love and other culturally sanctioned phrasing. Very tempting to do that. It's tempting to speak ill of other sinners and to think ourselves better than them. Well, if you're doing that, repent. You're no better than anybody else. Neither am I. Each of us has sin enough of our own, sin enough to always beg for repentance. Look with mercy upon your neighbor. Speak to them of the true love which has come down from above, which has taken on our flesh and put himself into death and risen from the grave. And so then, sons of God, having this living in active love, do your best to be generous and godly, merciful and patient, imitating your Lord and God as his people in this dark world. Love your brother, not in the shallow, fleshly, love is love way, but with a true and genuine interest in their life and salvation. For those who love God also love their neighbor. We simply love those whom God already loves. You know and believe that God loves you so much that he has numbered the hairs on your head. That's not to say that God goes around keeping a catalog of numbered hairs, but that he has an exact and complete foreknowledge of everything to do with you. Who loves you like that? In your book they were all written the days fashioned for me, when as yet there were none of them. So with the apostle we say, we have come to know and believe the love that God has for us. We know our Lord Jesus Christ through his word and promises. The Spirit works faith in us so that we have joy and peace in believing, knowing firmly that God does love us. Love is love? That's just the buzzing of the demonic mosquito. Don't fall for it, even though it echoes in your ears a hundred thousand times. Love does not rejoice in wrongdoing, but rejoices with the truth. God is love. In him we know love, for we know our God, Jesus Christ, through his Spirit. In him we know the love of God. His love teaches us what love is and how to love sinners such as, our health, such as ourselves. So we pray God help us in these last days with their confusion, their darkness, and their pressures and keep us in this faith. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Thank you for joining us for Chapel. Today we pray for Deaconess Kim Biltman, who serves the Lord in Germany. The broadcast of Chapel is underwritten by LCMS International Mission and Ministry to the Armed Forces. To learn more about LCMS International Mission and Ministry to the Armed Forces, visit kfuo.org chapel.